Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and alongside me is my co-host, Alara Skye. Today, we're focusing on the herbicide Paraquat, the recent legal settlement surrounding it, and what emerging research tells us about its connection to Parkinson's disease. Let's explore why this issue matters to farmers, consumers, and regulators alike. Thanks, Ethan. Syngenta, the company that markets Paraquat under the name Gramoxone, has agreed to a multi-billion dollar settlement covering more than 5,800 lawsuits filed by farmers diagnosed with Parkinson's after years of exposure. While the agreement offers relief to many, it also highlights decades of corporate strategy aimed at minimizing or concealing Paraquat's hazards. Paraquat isn't a fringe chemical. It's one of the most widely used herbicides in U.S. agriculture. Studies show that individuals exposed to it face roughly a two-and-a-half-fold increase in Parkinson's risk. That staggering statistic raises an obvious question. How does a single compound translate into such significant neurological damage? Research from the National Institutes of Health sheds light on that. Paraquat generates harmful reactive oxygen species that cripple mitochondria, the energy centers inside neurons. Damaged mitochondria trigger a cascade of cell death in brain regions governing voluntary movement. Over time, tremors, rigidity, and slowed motion emerge, defining features of Parkinson's disease. Turning back to the settlement, Syngenta insists it acted only to avoid costly court battles, claiming Paraquat remains safe when used as directed. Yet, internal memos reveal that company scientists tracked links to Parkinson's for years. Why pursue settlement if the data exonerated them? The answer seems rooted in financial calculus, not scientific clarity. Exactly. Corporate emails show coordinated efforts to discredit independent researchers and to withhold unfavorable findings from regulators. Syngenta hired public relations firms to influence opinion and delay scrutiny. By settling now, the company sidesteps jury trials that could expose those tactics and open the door to larger verdicts, much as Bayer experienced with glyphosate. That Bayer precedent is instructive. After losing the first roundup trial, Bayer's stock value plunged and subsequent awards soared. Syngenta evidently concluded that one public loss over Paraquat might trigger a similar avalanche. From a business standpoint, settlement caps liability. From a public health standpoint, it leaves pressing safety questions unresolved. Meanwhile, Paraquat remains embedded in modern farming. Orchards, cotton fields, wheat, and pastures. Farmers depend on it for weed control, yet many developed Parkinson's despite following label instructions and using enclosed tractors and full protective gear. Their experience illustrates a gap between regulatory assurances and real-world outcomes. Let's look closer at that NIH study you mentioned. Conducted with the Parkinson's Institute, it compared 110 farmers with Parkinson's to 358 without the disease. Users of Paraquat showed 2.5 times greater incidence. Crucially, the investigators verified actual pesticide application records, removing guesswork about exposure history. The data were compelling. Paraquat's molecular structure allows it to persist long enough to enter the central nervous system. Once inside, it selectively kills dopamine-producing neurons in the substantia nigra, the brain's movement control hub. Loss of those cells explains the hallmark symptoms, shuffling gait, muscle stiffness, and resting tremor. Additional research introduces another factor, plant lectins. These proteins, common in wheat, soy, and legumes, can ferry Paraquat from the gut to the brain via the vagus nerve. Scientists demonstrated that low-level oral exposure combined with dietary lectins sparked alpha-synuclein aggregation, a protein misfolding process central to Parkinson's progression. That synergy underscores why even distant, low-dose exposures matter. If lectins accelerate Paraquat transport, people living near sprayed fields could face heightened risk simply through dust or contaminated produce. Unfortunately, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency reapproved Paraquat for 15 years in 2021 and now says a fresh review may take at least four more. California's Department of Pesticide Regulation has already linked Paraquat not only to neurological harm, but also to thyroid disruption and birth defects. 
Yet on the federal level, regulatory inertia prevails. Lawsuits force discovery of alarming evidence, but administrative action still lags behind scientific consensus. Real-world stories drive the point home. Ohio vineyard owner David Gilbert handled Paraquat for decades, wore protective suits, and still developed Parkinson's. California prune grower Charlene Tenbrink sprayed Paraquat three times a week for seven years. She, too, now struggles with tremors and muscle rigidity. They followed the rules, yet the rules failed them. Compounding the problem, Paraquat's acute toxicity is extreme. A swallowing sip can be fatal, and there is no antidote. Some countries banned it partly to curb suicides. Given both chronic neurological danger and immediate lethality, prudence would suggest phasing it out while safer weed management tools mature. Until that happens, personal protection is critical. First, determine whether Paraquat is applied near your home or workplace. State pesticide use registries or local farm bureaus can help. Second, Install true HEPA plus carbon air purifiers and reverse osmosis water systems to strip herbicide residues. Third, strengthen mitochondrial resilience with antioxidant-rich foods like berries, citrus, carrots, and beets. Supporting organic and regenerative agriculture also reduces demand for Paraquat. Consumers can favor growers who eschew synthetic herbicides. Farmers can explore cover cropping and mechanical weed control. Each market choice signals that public health takes precedence over chemical convenience. Simple household habits make a difference, too. Remove shoes at the door, wash produce thoroughly, launder work clothes separately, and keep dust under control. None of these steps cures Parkinson's. But together, they lower cumulative exposure and support cellular defenses against oxidative stress. To recap, mounting evidence ties Paraquat to a 2.5-fold rise in Parkinson's driven by mitochondrial damage and selective neuron death. Syngenta's settlement provides compensation, yet sidesteps courtroom transparency. Regulatory delays persist, but individuals can act now by monitoring local pesticide use, upgrading filtration, favoring antioxidant nutrition, and advocating for organic practices. Knowledge is power. Understanding how Paraquat undermines cellular health equips listeners to protect themselves and to demand stronger safeguards. Thank you for joining us on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed, stay proactive, and we'll meet you next time with insights that help you take charge of your well-being. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.